the final word that I want to say, the final value that I want to share, and this is where we need the, I want to use the iPad again, is um, next steps. You've heard us talk a lot about next steps. Everybody always has a next step. Um, there are, um, what's your picture of the church? What's your default picture of the church? You know what the default picture of a lot of people is? The church is a pond to get people into. We need to get more people into the church. But the church isn't a pond to get people into. The church is a river that moves people on. There's always a next step for every individual and for the church. We never arrive. If you look at the, if think about the church that Jesus started. In Acts chapter 1, Jesus commissions his followers and he says in verse 8, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, here are the next steps, Samaria, uttermost parts of the earth. If you look at the life cycle of the church that Jesus created, you read the book of Acts, you know what it looks like? It looks like this. It began with the man, Jesus Christ. It became a movement, right? Jesus and the 12, and then 125, and then 3,000 were baptized the first day. And then a couple of chapters later, you have 5,000 men. And it just, and then you start reading, it says, and the Lord added daily. And then you read the church is multiplying later on. There's always this movement forward. After a while, the church becomes, develops machine qualities. And that's not necessarily all bad. You can't just always be moving. The larger you get, the more you have to organize things. In Acts chapter 6, we see the beginning of organization of the church. But by the time you get to the fourth century and Constantine takes over, the church becomes a machine. It's a business. You know the difference between a movement and the machine? The movement is about the mission. The machine is about the machine, perpetuating the organization. Movement is about faith. Machine is about fear. Faith saying, this is what God wants us to do. We've got to do it. Let's try to do it. We don't know how we're going to accomplish it, but if God wants us to do it, he's going to provide. Where God calls, he provides. Machine, there's this fear of, we can't do that. We don't have enough people. We can't do that. It's going to wear, it's going, I'm afraid we're going to burn people out. We can't do that. We don't have enough resources. Rather than saying, oh, no, no, if God's calling us to do that, we need to figure out how he, how's he going to provide the resources. That's, that's movement. Machine is this fear-based, internally focused. And you stay machine long enough, and down here, you become a museum. And you know the thing about museums? Museum. You know the thing about museums? <laughs> Museums are places you go and say, man, those things in the past were really nice, weren't they? And the movement has died. You know where we are after 30 years? You know the nature? If we're not careful, we're going to be right here. We can be satisfied. We can say, well, we, can't, we don't have enough people to do this. Rather than saying, how do we, have, how do we disciple more people? We can't do this. We don't have enough people. You know, we can't afford to do that. No, what is the next step? And everybody taking next steps is what leads to movement. I one time asked Bob Russell, Bob Russell preached at a church when he started there. It was 250 people. By the time he retired, it was over 18,000. And I asked Bob, I said, Bob, what was the key? I've been watching Southeast since I was in junior high when you were 400 people and I heard 18,000 people. What's the key to it always growing? And in humility, he said, well, we haven't always grown. It just looks that way. Okay, you're 18,000. You've done okay. Um, but he said, Brett, I think one of the keys of God's blessing, God's power, but he said, if I would say one thing, it would be we never felt like we arrived. He said, whenever we got to the top of a hill, we always knew there's another hill to climb. We always said, okay, God, what's the next hill you have for us? It's easy to get into a building like the end zone and say, okay, now we've arrived. We can settle. It's easy to get to your small group and like, hey, we have 10 people in this small group. We love each other. We like this. It's all for us. Really comfortable. And it's kind of, hey, we've arrived. 
it's easy to get your own salvation and to feel like, hey, I've arrived. I don't need to disciple anybody else. I don't need to share my faith with anybody else. The question for all of us is, what's your next step? What's our next step? How do you discover God more, experiencing him more in worship and personal Bible study? What does it mean for you to develop spiritually, get involved in, in a discipleship relationship, discipling others, stewardship? What's it mean to deploy for service? You're the hands and feet of God going and making disciples.